Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office at Teardown Lab. Yes, another huge car project. This is the headlight unit off a Range Rover L322, and it's bloody huge. And it's got a halogen, it's got a xenon. Um, that's the basic stuff that this unit has, but it also has a wiper thing down here and side lights if you've got the whole thing connected. But this is the bit I'm interested in because it does have a fault and some of the fault may be attributed to the fact that it doesn't have a cover on the high frequency stuff here. This very uh, expensive um, bulb which definitely should have a cover on there but I suspect the issue is more to do with this control unit so the purpose of this video today really is to just inspect it because I can see here looking at the connectors and stuff that's all clean but this ballast is looking a bit dicey it's doing a bit of a weird flickery being a bit of a weird flickery chap um, and I'd like to get to the bottom of that because there's a problem with these once they, they sort of start flickering and then the bulb it'll just oh look at that got it out the bulb will just go out and uh that's not good while you're driving and to get it back you have to sort of turn off the light and back on again just having a quick inspection at an angle but there's no water damage in there think think heavens but it would be nice to find a cover for that though because that oh oh look at that just bent that pcb connector in there don't know if you can quite see in there but uh, that could have been expensive. Yeah, can't focus, but yeah, be very gentle with that. Crikey, that's that's a very. Oh, what happened there? He said, "I'm I'm actually just basically snapping that thing off of everything." That looks to be though the uh, relay solenoid thing because there's some sort of mechanical high low dip beam thing going on there. But I'm going to go get a torque set and we'll remove this panel. Like all things in these cars, all of these bits are expensive. So if I could prevent the issue in a cheaper way, I will. Um, so the main problem appears to be the fact that there's data going in these connectors. It's They're all connected by some sort of digital bus. And when things start messing around, it all goes Tonto and it takes out some of the internal stuff on the car. Um, you know, so it's, it's, you're in this weird scenario where an issue with your light module can cause your bloody radio to stop working or your uh, traction control to start complaining, or you know, just crazy stuff. And uh, when I see things like corrosion on things, it, that's the bit where you know, I just it's, it's easier just to take Occam's razor and uh, check them out first. Hmm, interesting one. So, just dusting that off. Fortunately, there's no corrosion on the connector, so let's assume all this bit is okay. And um, while we're here, though, let's just have a quick look, because you've got this bulb here, and it does have a ballast. It has to, because you see those two wires? They must go to a ballast somewhere, which I suspect now, looking at it, is also somewhere within this bloody lamp module, and it doesn't look like it's accessible in any sensible way so I was, I was kind of hoping to see if, if there's a, a serviceable part so if this lamp was playing up I could swap it with the one on the other side of the car and then try that again and see what happens but obviously I can't it's totally bonded in there however I probably can do the same with these modules I bet they're the same on the left and the right anyway enough of that Ugh. shove that down there Let's just first things first, give this a nice little wipe down. And if you've got um, some WD-40, and you're careful, because you don't want to get it in, in it, um, that'll do a nice job of actually getting this corrosion off the unit here. Um, have a nice sort of silicone gasket there. That's why the connectors are looking very healthy. I have to admit, they're looking pretty, pretty healthy in that block. Find a suitable Torx screw. Bit loose, one more. And this is a T15. Come on, be a T15. It is indeed a T15. So we've got four of those. Oh, I can't I can't wait to see what's inside. I'm kind of fascinated. A ballast on a, an HID light is something that can be quite complicated if you think about it because what it's got to do it's not only got to sort of sustain an arc but it's got to ignite that arc 
and measure if that arc still going, still within operating parameters, all those things. It's a complicated old thing, really. That's why they're so bloody expensive. Um, and to be honest, the bane of my life. I mean, I, I have a few vehicles with them, and to be honest, they just play up. They start flickering. Some will flicker when you're driving, which to you know other part, you know, other traffic users, other road users, looks like you're flashing them, um, which can obviously be annoying to them. Um, others can basically when you turn off the vehicle or as you turn it off it's weird as you turn the lights off it just starts flashing and flickering for a few seconds before they shut down it's almost like they're going are you sure you want me off are you sure are you sure um, and then I'll just refuse to work and you can't sort of carry a spare bulb around it doesn't matter if you did because it could be the ballast that's gone so it's not something that you can easily fix um, you know, on the side of the road so yeah, I, and, uh, th th it's got a nice kind of w bright light, but so does a, a good halogen. Fresh halogen works fine too. It's all it's all a bit of con really. So this is sealed. Gotta be careful when reassembling that. Might need a little smear of silicone. Just bathroom silicone will do. Ah, oh, good. It's not damaged though. It's a silicone seal, but it's not been damaged in the extraction. Let's see who makes this. Any, any markings on that bit? No, it must have been on here. Made in France. Mm -hmm. By who? Maybe this is the manufacturer mark. AL? 35 watts max, 1200 volts, 85 volts AC. Lots of things here. So that seems to be the specification of the unit. Don't know what any of that means. I'm not going to bother finding out. The cover's quite interesting. It's got these sort of bits, anti-vibration bushes to sort of push against things. And uh, the internals are looking good. Um, not really much in here apart from what I assume is a very interesting looking capacitor. There's not really any user serviceable sort of parts it seems that sort of need to be need to be user serviced in here. Crystal perhaps, microcontroller, Infi Infineon um, this will be doing the sort of various bus communications and things like that. Just being ginger here to see if there's any kind of a give. You've got to be careful because you don't know what's under here. You might try to crank this up and it'll just, you know, break something on the bottom, but it's probably just thermal compounded on hard to know whether there's components underneath it really. I don't really want to break it because they're really expensive. Um, even even sort of scrappy prices you, you've got to be looking at over 100 quid easily. Yeah, nothing going on though, nothing going on. But yeah, it's almost unfortunate that it looks in such good nick, isn't it? <laughs> if I was going to sort of replace anything, I guess it would be this 680 microfarad capacitor 40 volts and possibly sort of check out this coil but i think i don't think i'm going to be doing anything really with it it's fine let's see if we can get some part numbers at least off that so this is an infineon at b59703 uh, siemens 96 and this guy this guy's got stuff on it this is a 30343, but I don't think that's the actual main number. B, yeah, it's B, no, B438BEX, it could be, or BK. Try one more, come on. Let's get your, get your scraping fingers on. Foam. Right, let's try again. B four three B three four eight B E Y. There you go. So that's what that is. That's all that's in there. That's all she wrote. I think I'll just pop the lid on that. Now I do wonder if I swap this with the one on the other side. Before I do that, let me see if I can just clean off this with some label remover or something. If I before I swap this. 
it would be quite interesting to know um, what the computer is going to make of it because it does have a left hand side and a right hand side so these probably do need to be sort of reprogrammed in the sort of dealer software um, it does have that in the menu I have seen it but I think that's going to be fine for my debugging purposes <laughs> didn't do a great job WD is your friend label remover nil nil point on. That's a really good seal though, I like that enclosure. Might just have a quick look though before we pack it up. Let's have one last look at how this interfaces into that main light unit. Just to check. There is an odd thing here I noticed too. Why one of the screws really shiny? Has somebody been in here? Get that last one on. If you look at things like motorbikes, and aftermarket kits for HID lights. You can buy them, which will fit a standard lamp. They uh, don't have this level of complexity. In fact, most of them just have two wires where you just give them power and they work. Um, here I'm noticing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 pins in that. Ugh, 20 pin connector. And this bloody thing again, this is like carrying a 14 inch telly around. These cars use up so much fuel because they're just carrying all this weight. <laughs> um, that looks good still, really does look fine. You can poke that through, look, that connector. Ah, don't lose it. <laughs> just see, oh. <laughs> so you've got to be careful. I'm just wondering if there's any sort of issue with uh, the connection. I mean, there would be now, of course back. I think you'd know though if you'd over push that because that thing would have just been in there like that how I got it. Oh, that seems okay. <laughs> Let me just push that module there. Yeah I mean it's not feeling massively inserted but I mean it's a standard design it's got to be okay. So there, I hope that's uh, been of some use to you of at least how to start the process of checking out that module. Electrically, who knows? I mean, there's too many things to go wrong. But as I said, this is a standard one. It'll probably be the same on the left and the right, so you might be able to swap these over and test that. At least you can isolate if it's the box or if it's the lamp, and that's really all you can hope to do, all you really need to do right now. As ever, keep on watching, keep on driving, keep on wrenching, Thanks for watching. <music>